Day 48, Thursday, August 22nd. Glacier Cruise. Taking a Stan Stevens cruise to a glacier. Well, thanks. All right, well, good morning, everyone, and once again, welcome aboard the Glacier Spirits and myself and the crew. We have a really nice trip planned for us today. We're going to go all the way out to the nearest glacier and back to Mount Deeds. It's about 140 miles for our trip. We're going to travel today. We're going to go to here for Mount Deeds. It's a whole bunch of more otters. These are just, you know, maybe close friends at best. It's not a family. Otters don't mate for life. Uh, just kind of safety and numbers. The bigger the group, the safer they feel as they float around out here. Now, while they're very unique mammals, water temperature today out here is about 50 to 40 degrees. So not the warmest, and uh, they don't have any fat. They were discovered by explorers in Alaska. It was the Bering Expedition on the Aleutian Islands. They got shipwrecked and once they got all the concerned, so the pipe was just buried down here into town. Now they announced the discovery of the crew uh, in 1968. They had discovered a vast amount of it up on the north slope of Alaska in Crudeau Bay. And one of the first things they had to do was it had to be determined if there was a viable way to get all of that crude oil to the U.S. market. And they selected building this terminal here And then uh, just above all of that, there's a very uh, faint light black line. It looks very thin. It looks like someone just kind of took a paint roller and rolled paint all over the rocks there. That is a lichen that grows here in the sound. Uh, it grows right at the upper reaches of our highest heights because it takes a little salt water, fresh air, and sunlight to grow. So where you see that uh, faint black stripe there above all the vegetation is how high our highest tides are. Just to my left of us.
I wondered if the whales follow the fishing boat. That's the sea lions uh, out here on the buoy just because it's a convenient place for them to rest. They can't rest in the water. They have to have oh, there's several of them. Three, four of them. I was just about to say, that's about as big a sea lion ever as I've ever seen on a buoy, and even that one not full grown. Blue ice occurs when snow falls on a glacier, is compressed, and becomes part of the glacier. Air bubbles are squeezed out and ice crystals enlarge, making the ice appear blue. melts, believe it or not, the ice melts much faster in the water than it melts in the air. And that's because the water has what's called a very high specific heat. And so it's going to melt much faster underneath the top heavy. And it either will roll all the way over or just partially. So this beautiful blue piece that's just out ahead of us and uh, to the left of the bow, if you look close at the top of it, it's going to look very solid day for the sun. ice falls off the face of the glacier when it slams into the water it breaks apart into smaller pieces and so uh, the size of them and the dirtiness of them uh, makes me think they came from the bottom
walk around of the main deck of the Glacier Spirit catamaran. There were baby sea otters on the port side, so the captain powered down the engines to give us an excellent view. The Glacier Spirit is 90 feet long with a top speed of 24 knots under the power of twin 1200 horsepower Detroit diesel engines. She was built in 2017. for about a year after they're born. Very, very buoyant and uh, can't dive all the way down to get food and so they're dependent on their moms to feed them. And so we see them out here and they look like just really fat sea otters. That's just the babies right now.
surfaces again. Watch your step. Our weight is going to catch us.
I'll just kind of hold it here for a couple minutes. It's not the type of well that's going to show you a fluke or anything like that. They're very small, they leave wells, very shy and elusive. And usually if you do see them once or twice, that's it. You just kind of take it But it may surface again, so we'll just kind of cruise here for a minute and see if it does. I can tell it was a Mickey because the dorsal fit on its back is very simple shaped. There it is. Racing off out there in the distance, away from us. I just kind of circle around and we'll see. Sometimes this, they will surface mm -hmm. in the back. Hang on, us. We need to get in close to shore so we can have a look at the sea lions. And he's going to hold it here. Uh, there's boats that just ahead of us. The lights are in for the sequel. I'm not sure if they're about to start to launch their net or not. So I need to just kind of keep it slow and make sure I have a, space. a lot of things before they determine it's okay to open a new fish. Now, the remarkable thing is that uh, most people don't realize. About 90% of Alaska seafood is exported to China. Now, uh, the boat, the skiff, and uh, it's dragging out top to the left as we go by here. It's fish. Now, the remarkable thing is, uh, most people don't realize, about 90% of Alaska seafood is exported to China for processing. So, uh, hands on, do the hard work here, the water, and then after it leaves the hands of your fishing fleet, it really becomes pretty much a corporate commodity. At that These point. are stellar sea lions that are found throughout the state's southern coastal region.
enjoy it.